Pistols, we love them. All types, modern style, historic, replicas, BBs and pellets. And they even come in all different power types. Springers, CO2, and don't forget, they even come in PCP format too. Today, it's time to take a look at the PCP pistols and find out what they're all about. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. Today it's a beginner's guide to help the newer guys into our sport. And as usual, I'm hoping some of our more experienced shooters will also take something away from this too. Most people start into the air pistol scene with one or the other of spring powered or CO2 powered. In my case, I was bought a Webley Junior Mark II for my 14th birthday many, many years ago. And me being the old sentimental type, I still have it here. But it is a very old design, low powered, heavy, and a nondescript design. A lot of people are drawn towards a pistol that replicates their favorite film or computer game nowadays. And these type don't lend themselves to anything other than CO2 powered, really. And I own and have reviewed lots of these in the past. It's quite possible though that after a while you can become tired of having to mechanically charge the gun each shot or tired of having to pay out for CO2s after using a few magazine loads of ammo. And you may be looking for something more sophisticated which is easier to use and doesn't require feeding with a steady supply of purchased CO2. Enter the PCP pistol with all its pros and cons, costs and ancillary requirements. The main reason people buy a PCP pistol is to gain that level of independence from other charging methods. But it isn't all simplicity and good news. Cost is usually the main drawback here. You see, they can range from around £170 UK to several hundreds of pounds, as we'll see later. Precharged pneumatic or PCP then. This is quite simply the method of putting air into the gun from an outside source, usually a pump, air tank or compressor. This air is then the main power source and will last for as many shots as the power demand and capacity will allow, before the need to return to your charging method for a refill. Usually, being a pistol, the capacity of these is quite small, meaning fewer shots but quicker refill times. The air is stored in the air cylinder on the gun, which is usually under the barrel, but can be elsewhere, including the pistol grip, for example. Some of these cylinders have a gauge to show you the pressure in the cylinder, helping to inform you of what power is left available before the need to refill. This is not always the case, often when it comes to the lower end priced items. Because of this cylinder, it becomes very difficult for a manufacturer to design a replica gun around an existing design. So you're starting to look at more functional gun rather than form, so to speak. I have a few different PCP pistols here to show you what I mean about the styles. There is the single shot Artemis PP700W, the Artemis PP800 multi-shot, the classic Brokock Grand Prix S6, and the Air Arms Alpha. As you can see, most of them use the under the barrel system for ease and higher capacity, rather than the air arms, which is not about fast firework, more deliberate single shot and the need for better balance. So it's incorporated into the grip. Charging is done by use of supplied adapters, which will slot into the gun, then top up and remove when done. It is, at this stage, worth showing you the method of doing this safely and correctly. And in this example, I will use the Artemis PP800. The filler probe adapter is supplied in the box and is attached to your charging source. In this example, 
a diver's tank, which is available in all different sizes. This has an adapter already on the airline, which is designed to fit most other quick fill probes. Once fitted securely, this is then inserted into the cylinder on the gun and then return to the air tank to ensure the bleed valve is closed. This is just the same for other charging sources. Then slowly open the main valve to start and fill the gun. This is best done slowly to allow you to not only monitor the fill pressures, but to ensure you don't exceed the manufacturer's recommended pressure for the gun that you're filling. A slow fill also prevents damage to the seals and prevents everything getting too hot. Once the desired pressure is reached, close off the air valve on the tank or switch off the compressor or simply stop pumping. The next part is very important. Don't try to remove the probe from the gun until you've bled the air from the line that is feeding the gun. It must be noted that this is running very high pressure and could be quite dangerous. The air is removed from the pipe by opening the bleed valve on the tank, pump or compressor. There will be a sharp hiss of air for a short period of time. Once this has been released, then carefully remove the probe and keep it clean and safe until it's required again. You're now safely charged, ready for use. If your gun doesn't have a gauge to tell you what the pressure is, then use the gauge on the tank, pump or compressor as your guide. But don't overpressure the gun thinking that you'll get more power or more shots from the gun. You won't. You will simply damage the gun and these are not cheap items to simply damage in this way. You're all loaded up with air, so what about ammunition? Well, PCPs usually use pellets rather than BBs, which would often fuel CO2 guns, mainly because they are a more functionally focused gun as previously stated. With this in mind, they're aiming for a good power delivery and accuracy, which means they're usually rifled barrels, which prefer softer ammunition rather than steel, as you would put in your CO2 BB gun. Steel BBs would simply damage the rifling of the barrel, and this rifling is used to spin the projectile, aiding accuracy. So, lead pellets would be the choice of fuel for these, so to speak. This can be in various calibers, but is usually and mostly in either 177 4.5 millimeters or 22 5.5 millimeters. The smaller 177 caliber will be a lighter pellet and will travel at higher speeds, which means less of an arc and a flatter trajectory when using these and often aids accuracy and as such is often the caliber of choice for target shooters. The 0.22 caliber is heavier and has more of an arc when using, but due to its weight may travel slower, but is heavier and has more hitting power if you're thinking of using these guns for small pest control. Now at this point I should point out that pistols are more difficult to use when it comes to accuracy than rifles and of course in the UK they are limited to half of the power level of a rifle. So please don't go out thinking you can use these for medium pest control such as pigeons or rabbits over the longer ranges because they aren't suitable. Close quarter rat work possibly. If you have a more powerful one that is shooting close to the UK limit or if you're able to have a higher than six foot pound in the country that you're in. So we're powered up and caliber specific ready. What about loading? This can be very different for different guns and different manufacturers preferences. The excellent and low priced Artemis PP700W is a single shot and is loaded into the back of the barrel by sliding the rear cover to one side and dropping in 
your pellet. Once in, close up, and you're ready. Now this can be a little awkward, as in this case, because I've fitted a scope to aid accuracy, and as such, the scope gets in the way. And unless you have fingers like spider's legs, you're going to need one of these. An inexpensive pellet loader. Perhaps you don't want to be loading each pellet on an individual basis, preferring a magazine loaded up to get more shots faster. This is available on the Artemis PP800 and has a nine round magazine. Now this is a closed item and is loaded by dropping in a pellet backwards after turning the front cover all the way round. Then simply continue to rotate dropping in each pellet face down until all nine are loaded. It's then ready to slot back into the gun. This particular gun does come with both the nine round magazine and a single shot tray. This is to satisfy the more target focused individuals often because they prefer the idea of being able to carefully load each pellet in themselves to ensure that they're not deformed in any way as can sometimes happen in a magazine. The Virock HW44 and the Brocock have open magazines which is easier to load But it doesn't tell you when the gun is empty, like the PP800 does, because this will lock open the bolt when there are no more rounds left in the magazine, to prevent you from firing the gun when it's empty. Let's take a look at power levels then next. This is restricted in pistols and can vary from region to region and country to country. Here in the UK, that is legislated to a maximum of six foot pounds. The foot-pound indication is an energy measurement. This is also measured in joules in some places, mainly around Europe. It must be said that just because you bought a pistol in the UK, it doesn't mean you will have six foot-pound output. This will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and gun model to gun model. Let's just take a look at the guns we have here. The Brocock is currently shooting at 4.7 foot-pounds or 6.3 joules. The Air Arms Alpha is producing 3.6 foot-pounds or 5 joules, but power is not so important because this is a pure target gun and accuracy is the most important feature. So, simply enough power to be accurate, that's all that's needed. The Artemis PP800 produces 5.8 foot-pounds or 7.9 joules and the older PP700 is adjustable to get you as close as possible to the legal, legal limit. But be warned, taking it close and potentially over the limit can result in up to five years at Her Majesty's pleasure. So don't be tempted into squeezing every last bit of energy from this gun. The consequences just aren't worth it. And of course, any sort of tuning of a gun will require you to have a chronograph to establish just what power the gun is producing. This particular one is producing five and a half foot pounds and that keeps it comfortably within the UK law. Accuracy then. Well, this is helped by keeping your guns clean and well maintained. And of course, the type of pellets that you're using. Don't forget to use quality pellets rather than ultra budget items. These guns are ideally made to be more accurate than your standard plinker. So feeding them the right ammunition is pretty important. It should also be mentioned that different barrels on different guns can favor different pellets. So it isn't one size fits all, I'm afraid. More trial and error and patience. You may need to try a few different ones before you find the ones that suit your gun. Sighting. It should be pointed out that often with PCP pistols, they don't always come with external open sights. Instead, requiring an alternative option. This can be red dots, lasers, scopes, 
Red dots are terrific and keep the gun fairly light still and keep the open theme with no magnification. Using a scope is another option, but it does add weight and, of course, magnification, bringing the target closer effectively. But please be aware, a pistol scope is very different from a rifle scope and they are not usable from one to the other. A rifle scope is designed to be used close up to the eye, but a pistol scope is designed to be used at arm's length and indeed will be completely unusable close up. These pistol scopes usually come in lower magnifications than rifle scopes because such as a 32 times magnification scope on a pistol you just wouldn't be stable enough for you to be able to lock onto your target. Keeping them quiet because you're kicking out more power than the smaller CO2 type replica pistols, they are considerably louder and as such the use of a silencer or moderator is often beneficial to keep the noise down to prevent annoying the neighbours or the like. Often these are a standard thread fit, but be aware some aren't and require an adapter to fit standard silencers. The difference when you use a silencer is very noticeable and would be recommended wherever possible. Without one, with one. Now I started out by saying the price difference on these can be quite wide. So let's take a look, shall we? Well, firstly, the Artemis PP700. It's an older model and this can be bought for around £170 UK. The new PP800 multi-shot version is around £229 UK. The Broco, I'm afraid, is a bit of a classic and you can only get them on the second-hand market now. The Viroc is a thing of beauty and will set you back around £650 UK, which is a lot of money compared to the others, but it is the higher-end quality wise and finally the air arms alpha i'm afraid that will relieve you of around 720 pounds plus uk but this is a special and specific tool to do a set job as you can see they vary greatly in design practicality quality and cost but there is usually one to suit each individual finally i should just mention the interim type of pcp that will be hitting the markets you see, there are versions that will be coming out with the ability to add stocks for stability and extra barrel length to increase velocity and power. This way you get to have both pistol and rifle all in one. Nice idea and surprisingly not too expensive, but that is to come. Hopefully this has been helpful for the newbies and has given you more information to be able to make any decisions you were mulling over. I realise this wasn't so much for the old hands, but thank you for watching, and if you want to know more about specific guns and types, and indeed all sorts of air gun related reviews, click the subscribe button and the alarm bell, and please feel free to go back through the reviews that have already been completed on the channel. Thanks for watching, shoot safely, and stay safe.